only God, the one God that we are submissive to. Besides him, there is no God. He's the omnipotent, omniscient, and the omnipresent God. Besides him, there is none. We thank God for these 35 years that our pastor, teacher, leader, and guide has been obeying the voice of God and publishing the word throughout all nations and to the uttermost parts of the world. We thank God how he has sustained him, kept him, and given him wisdom, knowledge, and the understanding of the truth of God. In other words, it takes God to make, mold, and design the church, and it takes God to make, mold, and design the man that he has placed in it to do what? Go out throughout all the world and preach the gospel to every creature that we all may be come under subjection to it. And this is just a fragment of the results of the doctrine. The local church here in Philadelphia started 35 years ago. Some of the original members have passed on, but thanks be to God, some are still alive and in their reasonable good health. We're going to call on to Minister Stephen Williams, still alive, and Sister Cheryl Howard, if she's still here, because many nations are being reflected today. When they call out your area, your location, stand and hold up your sign when they call you, as well as the designated area, and you will see representatives of that state or of that country, Sister Cheryl Howard and Minister Stephen Williams. time before we call the areas we want to give the very highest possible honor that can be given to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to the prophets to the apostles to our pastor and general overseer pastor Jennings to all the ministering brethren to everybody that's here on today as Deacon Jennings said about how God is continuing to work of the Lord through the man of God so as he said we're going to call out the areas and we're going to ask you to stand when I call that particular state. This is for the, some of the domestic temples. We have the Temple of Florida. Please stand and hold your sign up. We have the Temple of Mississippi. Mississippi. We have the Temple in Louisiana. We have, the, we have the temple in Tennessee. Remain standing. We have the temple in Minnesota. We have the temple in Alabama. Keep your sign and continue to stand. Now we're going to ask everyone to continue to stand as I call out the various areas. We're going to ask you to keep standing. We have the temple in Oregon. We have the temple in Maryland. The temple in Pennsylvania. The temple in Illinois. The temple in Michigan. The temple in New York.
We have the temple in Texas. The temple in California. The temple in New Jersey. And the temple in North Carolina. We have a temple in South Carolina. The temple in Delaware. The temple in Oklahoma. The temple in Virginia. The temple in Georgia. The temple in Connecticut. The Templar in Arizona. The Templar in Nevada. The Templar in Louis mm. Mm. I can't even say it. Wisconsin. All right. The Templar in Indiana. The Templar in Colorado, the temple in Mexico, the temple in Massachusetts, the temple in New Hampshire, the temple in Kentucky, the temple in New Missouri. Still remain standing. We have the state of Ohio. Temple in Washington State, and the International Temple representatives in Africa, the Bahamas, Cayman Islands, Canada. England, the Rodriguez Island, Trinidad, India, and of course, Jamaica, that's the musical state. Germany, the Mauritius Islands, Netherlands, Barbados, Belgium, Sweden, Switzerland, Australia, we're not finished yet, Dubai, Malaysia, Please remain standing. This is just a small fraction of what God has done.
instructions to give to the world. It takes a unique person for God to do this. Again, this is just a small reflection with the multiple states and countries, nationally and internationally, and this is just the beginning. So we're grateful and thankful for having a man, a teacher, leader, and guide like Pastor Jennings. Let's give him another hand for the work that he has done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're grateful. This time we're gonna turn this portion of the service over to Mark Moretti. And then from there, he'll give you instructions as to what to do. Thank you. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Greetings. Welcome to First Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're still celebrating our 31 International Holy Convocation and 35th Pastoral and General Assembly Anniversaries. We want to continue to keep Pastor Jennings in your prayers, his family, also the brothers that minister along with him and their families. We want to continue to pray for one another, the sick and the shut in, and just continue to not only hear God's word, but strive to obey it. Also, those that have signed up for the trip to Detroit, Michigan, Sister Borkins told me today that it's the last day for you to make payment to be able to get on that bus to go to Detroit. So if you haven't given your monies yet, Please go see Sister Boykins ASAP, or at the service, rather. Also, um, a lot of water bottles and trash has been left in the service, each service. Please, let's treat God's house with respect. So if you have water bottles after service, take your water bottles with you. Can I get an amen? Amen. All right. That will conclude the announcements at this time. We ask the brothers that are designated to take up the offering. You may do so at this time. We'll return the remainder of the portion over to our media director, Minister Dan Thompson. All right, greetings, everyone. Here again, we are certainly very glad to be back in the house of prayer another time. 
As always, uh, we give the highest due regard and praise and adoration to God Almighty, who is the giver of all life and breath. Uh, we thank God always for his servants of the past, uh, the prophets of old, and the apostles of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, we're certainly very grateful for Pastor Jennings, and uh, we give him due respect and honor. Uh, to all the ministering brethren that are here from uh, this country and abroad, we honor you likewise. To the saints of God, we greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus, as always, and to the visitors and friends that are here. Likewise, we're very glad that you'll be here uh, to celebrate with us. As everybody knows, this is our 31st International Holy Convocation. It's also our 35th pastoral anniversary, and we're so very, very grateful that God has blessed uh, Pastor Jennings to continue to lead and teach us up until this present point in time. Uh, we're going to move into our telecast, but before that, we are going to ask uh, you to sit attentively and listen to a few words uh, from a few of our ministers. Uh, not many, uh, since we're running a little late, but uh, Minister Ferguson, as you're very familiar with, from the Bahamas, Bishop Ferguson. Greetings, saints. Today it's a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord another day. I don't take it for granted whenever I have an opportunity to worship. I see it as a privilege and a grand opportunity for me to be present in the house of the Lord another day in the midst of God's people. I'm particularly pleased and happy to be in Pastor Jennings' 35th anniversary, 35 years of leading uh, the people of God. I can identify with it when I um, mark my 35th year there was a radical change in my life of ministry because then I recognized that I was getting old and began to go down the hill and I saw where my ministry is coming to a close and it was at that point at 35 years when I did a complete introspection of the work and labor that we were doing in the Bahamas. And at that point, I was a superintendent with the United Pentecostal Church International, and I decided that it was time for me to move on because after 28 years, I was unhappy. I had some beliefs that UPCI did not prescribe to, and I made a, con a conscious decision that I had to move on. At that point, I started to pray and ask the Lord to lead me or show me if there is any other person out there that preached and believed what I was preaching and God answered my prayer. At 40 years, I met Pastor Jennings and I then began to seek the Lord for another answer was to show me who Geno Jennings was. I never asked him anything about himself personally, but I tried to get into his mind, his thoughts, his way of thinking. I tried him at every opportunity I get. I spoke to some of his brothers around him and try to find if I can know who this man is. Because my interest is now shift to after 
I am off the scene. What will happen to the work after I am gone? And in that quest of seeking the Lord, for who Geno Jennings is. While sitting there, I had no idea that uh, Brother Dan would have asked me to bring greetings, but I was thinking about something, a vision that I had about First Church. And I'm going to share it with you. I, I thought it was personal, and I made um, a certain commitment to Pastor Jennings confidentially is between just us two. But for whatever it were, while sitting there, I felt that I should share it with, with you. And I'm going to share it. Several months ago, I had a vision and I saw Pastor Jennings was walking up this exceedingly high mountain. I never shared it with him. The mountain was beautifully landscaped. I've never seen no landscaping like that. It was so beautiful. And his eyes was focused on the summit of the mountain. He didn't look right. He didn't look left. He didn't look back, but his eyes was fixed at the top of that mountain. I was walking behind him about maybe 10 to 25 feet. I was walking behind him. And the strides that he took with his hand behind his back, he was taking that stride. And I saw the walk last night as he was preaching. I saw that stride and I was pondering about it. And as we walk up the mountain, Brother Dan knelt down as if he was tying a pair of shoes. And I said, Dan, I took Dan by his hand. I said, Dan, let's go. Because he didn't see where Pastor Jennings was going. Dan took William's hands because they were in the same position, kneeling down on one knee as if they were tying their shoelace. And Dan took William's hands and Dan said to Williams, let's go. Pastor Jennings looked neither left or right. He was totally focused on the top of that mountain. And when we got about 50 to 60 feet from the top, there was a huge volcano explosion. And the fire went straight up. Beautiful fire. And then the fire came down on us. And when I woke up, the thought was saying to me, my mind was saying, this is the day of Pentecost. This is the day of Pentecost. This is the day of Pentecost. And I laid there and I pondered what it really meant. And I know the mountain is the world. And someday God is going to pour out the baptism of the Holy Ghost in a mighty way on First Church. When I saw that, Pastor Jennings called me the next day. And I know he didn't know why I said it. But he was the first person in my entire life I made a commitment to. And I told him, I said, Pastor Jennings, I said, I don't want you to tell anybody this. This is between me and you. And he promised you won't share it. And I said, if you need a bridge to walk on, 
I'll be that bridge. If you need a pillow to rest on, I'll be that pillow. If you need a shoulder to cry on, I'll be that shoulder. I said, and if you go down in the muck, I'll be there to lift you up. I said, don't ask me why I tell you it, because I won't. All I want you to know that I'm here for you to do whatever you wish me to do. I'm saying that to say this. This morning in the minister's meeting, I felt his heart beat. And I tried to hold my composure. And I tried to encourage him from my own way. He understood where I was coming from. But the desire, the love for souls, the care that he has in his heart for the souls of God's people. And I'm making that commitment to him personally in the midst of you all that I will be that bridge I'll be that pillow. I'll be that shoulder. Whatever he needs, because I know that he has a deep connection with God's people. He cares about the souls that Jesus paid such a great price for. And for that, I'd like to thank God publicly that he raised up somebody who cares about his people. Who cares about souls. And ever since I met Pastor Jennings, every time we meet and talk, it is always about souls. It is always about what can we do, what can we do to reach the souls of man. The final thing I want to tell you is this. I spoke to Shade some months ago. And I said, Shade, who is Pastor Jennings? Shade said to me, my pastor. I said, I didn't, I didn't ask you about your pastor. I asked you about Gino Jennings. Shade said, my pastor, he cares about my soul. I said, what did you say, Shade? He said, my pastor cares about my soul. And it's something that Shade said to me, I'll never forget as long as I live. He said to me, I saw my pastor bled for my soul. And he said, as long as I live, I'm going to be there with my pastor. And I questioned him again this morning to hear if he had that same commitment. I don't have the time to tell you about it. But Pastor Jennings, as long as you have a commitment and a desire for the souls of God people, I'm with you. But whenever you deviate, I'm gone. God bless you. All right, we're so very grateful always uh, for words coming from uh, Bishop Ferguson from the Bahamas. I uh, want to continue to pray for him. As you can see, uh, the word of God is uh, spreading as the scripture says it would. And uh, I think he referred to the scripture from time to time that says the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountain. We're so very grateful for that. Uh, Saints of God, we want to say this to you in all soberness. 
uh, please be aware that you're in something that's very, very great. And in the years to come, uh, you will look back on days like this and you'll see clearly how God dealt with us as a people. Uh, we certainly give him all due honor and due respect. Uh, we're going to go right into our broadcast and certainly greet our radio and television viewers. Uh, you're listening to and watching the Worldwide Truth of God radio and television program coming to you from the First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we're located at 5105 North 5th Street in the city of Philadelphia here in Pennsylvania in the United States of America where the Apostle, Pastor Gino Jennings, our leader, teacher, guide, and he is our general overseer. You also notice that this is an international program and we do have many, many different nations here and people of different languages. With that in mind, today we want to specifically address our Spanish-speaking brethren. So at this time, we're going to ask Minister Abraham Aviles from Tallahassee, Florida to come forward. Paz de Cristo, hermanos. Venimos a saludarles en este día uh, por la primera iglesia de nuestro Señor Jesucristo, en la cual eh, nuestro pastor Gino Jennings es el que sobre, so, so, supervisa esta organización. Y queremos hablarles del camino de salvación, queremos ofrecerles de lo que Dios nos ha permitido participar a nosotros. Creemos en un solo Dios, creemos en un bautismo, creemos en una sola fe. Nuestra fe es la fe de la santidad porque desde el principio Dios le dio el mandamiento a Moisés que le enseñara a su pueblo cómo ser santo. Y eso es lo que nosotros continuamos el día de hoy. Creemos eh, que el bautismo en agua es necesario para el perdón de nuestros pecados porque la Escritura así lo establece y que debe de ser hecho en el nombre de Jesucristo porque la Escritura también nos dice que no hay otro nombre dado a los hombres debajo del cielo por el cual podemos ser salvos más que aparte del nombre del Señor Jesucristo. Creemos en un solo Dios porque no hay más. La Escritura nos enseña, oye Israel, el Señor nuestro Dios, el Señor uno es. Creemos en un Dios, un Dios verdadero, un Dios que tiene un propósito para nosotros y el Señor quiere la salvación para todas las almas. Por eso es que Él abre la puerta en este lugar para que nosotros hoy presentemos a ustedes este mensaje en español y e invitarlos a que nos escuchen por medio, de la, por medio de YouTube y nos hablen por medio de las informaciones que están puestas en el, en el canal de YouTube para poderles ayudar y entiendan lo que es el Señor Jesucristo. El Señor Jesús vino a nuestra vida con la intención de salvarnos porque nosotros estábamos perdidos, necesitábamos un Salvador. Entonces, el Espíritu Eterno que es Dios, creó a un, a un vaso, un cuerpo, en el cual el Espíritu se, se puso para que ese cuerpo pudiera funcionar y traernos esa redención que nosotros necesitábamos. Lo que quiero decirles es que hay una esperanza para todo mexicano, para toda gente hispana. Dios te ama, Dios quiere salvarte, Dios quiere darte la oportunidad de que tú también participes de este camino de santidad, de este camino de salvación que se encuentra en Jesucristo. Jesucristo es la respuesta para todos nuestros problemas. Jesucristo es la paz que hemos estado buscando por muchos años. En Jesucristo se encuentra todo lo que el hombre le hace falta. El hombre por el mundo camina utilizando drogas. Hay cosas que el hombre busca buscando ese amor, esa paz. Y no lo vas a encontrar. El mundo no te satisface como lo hace el Señor Jesucristo. Es necesario que el hombre se arrepienta. Es necesario que el hombre le pida perdón a Dios. Es necesario que el hombre venga y sea bautizado en agua en el nombre de Jesucristo para el perdón de sus pecados y se continúe en un camino de santidad. Eso es lo que la primera iglesia le ofrece a todo el mundo hispano. Y con la gracia y la, y la ayuda de Dios, vamos a seguir continuando, moviendo este movimiento en español, porque Dios quiere que todo el mundo sepa de este evangelio para que el mundo se prepare antes de que el Señor regrese. Cristo ama a todo el mundo, 
el Señor Jesús no es una persona que hace excepciones para nadie, la salvación es igual para todos. El bautismo que ahora nosotros predicamos, dice la Escritura, nos salva. Hay mucha gente que no cree que el bautismo sea necesario por las enseñanzas que el hombre ha traído. Pero la Escritura nos dice que el que creyere y fuere bautizado, ese será salvo. El bautismo es indispensable para nuestra salvación porque es la única manera establecida en las Escrituras para que nosotros podamos tener perdón de nuestros pecados. Cuando nosotros somos sumergidos en el agua y el nombre de Jesucristo es invocado sobre nuestra alma, nosotros ponemos a Jesucristo sobre nosotros, lo que quiere decir que hay gracia, hay misericordia, hay perdón, hay reconciliación con Dios una vez más. Y eso es lo que nos hace falta como gente hispana. Necesitamos a Dios en nuestra vida. Necesitamos ese perdón. Y ese perdón que andamos buscando se encuentra en Jesucristo. Esperemos que sigan eh, mandando sus cartas a, a la primera iglesia. No le hace que sean en español, mándenlas. Ellos nos las van a hacer saber para nosotros poder continuar a ayudarles. Recuerden... La, la, la verdadera iglesia del Señor Jesucristo cree en un solo Dios, un solo Señor, una sola fe y un solo bautismo. Y la, la verdadera iglesia del Señor Jesucristo practica un camino de santidad. Hay una diferencia entre nosotros y el mundo. Hay una diferencia entre nosotros y lo, y lo que el mundo conoce como el mundo religioso de hoy. Y esa confusión tan grande que hay, Dios simplemente no ha levantado a nuestro hermano Gino para que nos, nos ayude a cómo comprender ese camino de santidad de una manera mejor. Y Dios verdaderamente hemos probado de su misericordia. Dios es uno, no hay más. Si ustedes, si ustedes estudian las Escrituras se van a dar cuenta que la enseñanza que nosotros hemos recibido desde, desde que éramos niños de esa fantasía de la, de la Santísima Trinidad, nos vamos a dar cuenta que no existe, no existe, esa palabra nunca fue escrita, ni nunca ningún profeta, ningún apóstol, ni Jesucristo mismo, nunca le hizo referencia a Dios como una Trinidad, pero podemos mirar en las Escrituras desde el principio, cómo Dios ha establecido que Él siempre ha sido un solo Dios, Él en su manera natural de ser es Espíritu, y ese Espíritu Eterno, por querer tener relación con nosotros, se ha manifestado a la humanidad de muchas maneras, pero sin dejar de ser el mismo Eterno Dios. Dios es Espíritu y de todos los que le adoran, le tienen que adorar en Espíritu y en verdad. Verdad solamente se encuentra en Jesucristo. Él es un Dios que ha tenido compasión con la humanidad, ese Dios tomó una forma de hombre para podernos redimir, para podernos salvar de, la, de donde estábamos perdidos, pero no dejó de ser el mismo Dios. Ese, ese Espíritu Eterno hizo un vaso para poder tomarlo como sacrificio para nuestra redención de nuestros pecados. Queremos invitarlos y darle gracias a Dios por este grande privilegio que Él me da de estar enfrente de ustedes para poderles invitar que sigan escuchando las enseñanzas del Pastor Gino Jennings. Recuerden, la doctrina de nuestra iglesia aquí eh, eh, es, 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 es la que está en la Escritura. Un Señor, una fe, un bautismo. Señor es nuestro Señor Jesucristo, nuestra fe es la santidad y el bautismo tiene que ser en el nombre de Jesucristo. Que Dios mucho les bendiga. All right, we're very thankful for uh, Minister Abraham Avilas from Tallahassee, Florida. That was aimed directly at our Spanish-speaking audience, which is so, so very necessary. Just want to remind you again, you're listening to and watching the Worldwide Truth of God television program coming to you from the First Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our international headquarters is at 5105 North 5th Street in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, right here in the United States of America. Today, this broadcast is or was being made on July the 28th, the year 2019. Uh, this date has significance because we're also celebrating our 31st 
our 31st International Holy Convocation. Uh, but more significantly, we're also celebrating the 35th year, the 35th year of the pastoral anniversary of our dearly beloved brother and pastor, Pastor Gino Jennings. We are so happy that God has blessed him to work thus far, and we do believe there's many, many more years to come. Don't forget, if you desire to have more information about the First Church, go to our website at truthofgod.com, I think it is. And also, if you are very curious or would like to give us a phone call, it's one 231 2201 And also, our general email address is firstchurch at truthofgod.com. All right. Here now is our leader, teacher, and guide, messenger of the almighty God, Pastor Gino Jennings. Greetings, brothers and sisters. As always, we bear witness there is only one God. <clears throat> We thank him for his divine wisdom and his perfect understanding of all things. We thank him for being the true sender and teacher of holy prophets and of holy apostles. <clears throat> we thank him for being perfect. God is infallible. God doesn't have no errors. He is flawless. He sent the prophets and he sent the apostles. And he left on record what will save his people and his everlasting word, the scriptures. We thank him for the greatest of all ways that have ever been placed in the earth, the way of holiness. We thank God for all the ministers that are present, this wonderful convocation. And viewers, as our brothers as mentioned, we are celebrating 31 years of our General Assembly and also 35 years of leading God's people. And the different brothers and sisters that were standing indicating their location, if all the brothers and sisters of the truth of God was here, we couldn't hold this meeting at this campus. There are so many thousands internationally that serve the first church of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are grateful for God blessing us through the years and bringing us to this place, delivering us from the basement, five years in the cellar, a few years at the recreation center on Briar Road, several years on Frankfurt Avenue, many, many years on Frankfurt Avenue. And we've been here at this new campus now just three years. And the Lord truly have added daily from every continent on the planet, the truth of God followers reside. So many countries, so many villages, so many places of so many ethnic groups. As one of my brothers said to me yesterday, Pastor Her from Mongolia, he said, that's one thing I appreciate about you. You don't discriminate. You are after all races. And I am after every race under the sun. We don't care what nationality, we don't care what color. God made everybody for one thing, and that is for his glory. Now I just want to update our brothers and sisters and to the millions that are watching <coughs> of some of the work that is going on, not just here, but in other parts of the country. I do hope that many of you that are here and you that are jam-packed in the different rooms upstairs that haven't had the chance yet to visit the main auditorium and the lower auditorium and the administration building, 
to see the work that is being done, get a chance. The brothers will take you a tour around the campus and you'll look at everything. The lower auditorium is 98% done. The only thing left to do in the lower auditorium is put the carpet down, put the pews back together, clean the pews up. The duct work for the central air units are in. We're just waiting for them to deliver the, uh, the units that go on the outside. And once the carpet's laid, pews back together, PA system placed in, all the instruments placed down there, then we can move everybody from the gymnasium and get you in the lower auditorium. God willing, God willing, I thank God for my brother, the project manager, Brother Raj, who's one of the brothers out of the Baltimore location. And I thank God for him being the project manager because he's been pushing, pushing, and we got the workers in there working seven days a week, rotating shifts seven days a week. So as the administration building, I got to have the administration building and the lower auditorium done simultaneously because uh, we have so many uh, secretaries and administrators and whatnot, and we are semi-functioning by meeting in this and one of our schools here because the classrooms, uh, those that can be used for certain offices, but then there are so many areas that cannot be used. But we have full use of our administration building and, uh, and the lower auditorium. So God willing, Brother Raj is pushing to have us in there by October of this year or before, if it be the Lord's will. So, the lower auditorium, we're looking to dedicate first. But brothers and sisters, I would like to dedicate our main auditorium next year. We done ran out of room in our gymnasium. Every overflow room is just that, overflowed. They're standing in the hallway, some hanging around on the steps, because there's no more room. And uh, I believe when we get in the main auditorium, you're still going to have to get there early because there won't be no room in there either. We done removed the pipe organ out of the balcony and get ready to build tears for more seating. I'm told we can seat anywhere from 2,500 to 2,700 in the main auditorium, but uh, seems like every time I go in there, it gets smaller and smaller. So I would like to dedicate the main auditorium next year. Even though we have a crew working in the lower auditorium and in the administration building, Raj also got some of the crew to start working in the main auditorium, which I'm grateful for. So brothers and sisters, we, we just have a lot of work to do. I want to thank God for, I want to say to all the viewers of Mobile, Alabama, uh, our temple that we had on Halls Mill Road, the brothers and sisters been out grew that little place. And uh, we bought a place on Government Street. <laughs> God gave us a testimony with that. It was an 8,000 square feet church with an administration building, and um, we, uh, we purchased it. It was on the market for a half a million, and we didn't have a half a million, and if we did, we wouldn't give it to them no way. <laughs> so by the time I wanted to get in there and see it, it was a little bit below 400,000. So me and another uh, brother, Brother Collins, who used to be with me, 
we went in there and looked at it on one Saturday. And I think they, it was close to 400,000 at the time, but 300 and something thousand. So I gave the man an offer right on the spot. Yeah. I offered them $40,000. Yes, I offered them $40,000 for an 8,000 square foot church. <laughs> he looked at me. He said, are you serious? I said, yes. And uh, my agent that represented me, he looked at me. He didn't say nothing. So after they left, the building was below 400000 at this time. And do you know, they counter-offered me. They came all the way down to a hundred and something thousand. And then I came up, I think, maybe 1,000 to about 41,000. Do you know by the time we went back and forth with them, we agreed at 67,000. Yeah. So we bought the place for $67,000 and when we announced over the air, that's what we bought it for. All the viewers that know that property could not believe it because it's a prime location and it's a location that's, a location that's known around the city of Mobile. But then this campus came up and we put all the building projects that we had in America on hold so we can pay attention to this project and God bless us to buy this campus. So by the time I went back to Mobile to look over the work, I concluded, I said, well, I can save money. By the time I put all the money in here and do this and do that and do the other, I can buy a church that's already done. So my field is real estate and flipping property. So we bought it for 67,000 and we sold it for 200,000. There was some little jack legs in Mobile was teasing the church because the church was sitting, but they didn't know why it was sitting. Come on. Amen. I had to use my investment expertise and let that go to work. Yes. We sold it for 200000 And then I went back to Mobile to look around the city, and I had an appointment to look at three buildings. And before we got to the first building, we made a right turn off Government Street, off a main street called Pleasant Valley Road. On the corner, there was a church there with a little cemetery, three acres of land, and the church was close to 12,000 square feet. Church, administration building. So I told my agent, I said, stop the car. He said, what is it, Pastor Jennings? I said, it's a church for sale right there. He said, you're not supposed to come down here and see something and I don't know about it. I said, I want to get in that property. I got out the car and walked around the property and read some of the old names on the cemetery and I thought, hmm, I can kill a false prophet and bury him right here. <laughs> So the same day, by that afternoon, we was able to get inside the church and I prayed and I asked God, I said, this is what I want. I told the agent, he said, you want to see the other properties? I said, I don't need to see them. I see what I want right here. And God gave it to us. They wanted over 400 and something thousand. Of course, as always, I came extremely low, which makes some folks sweat, but we got it, I believe, at, a, I think it was 165 or 170 something thousand. And, and we already got the buyer for Halls Mill Road. 
Look at the way God worked. Halls Mill Road, we got the buyer for that. We sold Government Street to a trucking company. And I thank God for a brother uh, Shabazz Martin, the, uh, the minister that's down there. Uh, everything is already packed up and he done moved all the members out of Halls Mill Road and they already holding service and the fellowship hall of the new temple there on Pleasant Valley Road. So I want to thank all the brothers and sisters of Mobile for your cooperation, for your help. The contractors as well as our brothers are doing beautiful work in the main auditorium. Uh, we got the design, we laid down the design how we want it and and uh, so it, it's, it's looking good. God willing, I'll be flying down there to check out the work there. God willing, we hope to be dedicating our new temple on Pleasant Valley Road, Mobile. God willing, next year, 2020, God be our helper. We look to be dedicating it down there. We have enough room in that building that I don't have to get a small baptismal pool and set it on top of the ground. We're able to break up the ground like we did here in headquarters and actually have a swimming pool built in the ground. That way we can take you in there and bury you and let you float around some. Amen. So we, and we can seat a few hundred there and, and it's a blessing. Also, the Lord bless us with the new temple in the Portsmouth, Virginia area. Uh, the contractor is there. They are putting in the new furnaces now. They already started running the duck work for the Portsmouth, Virginia church. And God willing, we hope to dedicate that temple also next year in 2020. God willing, we hope to make a settlement on the new temple in Atlanta, or not in Atlanta, in Detroit, Michigan. God willing, we hope to make a settlement on that soon. And we look to dedicate that next year in 2020. So 2020 is going to be a very busy year for us. God be our helper. We are grateful for the work of God that God is doing for the truth of God throughout America, Canada, throughout the Caribbean, throughout Europe, throughout the Asiatic world, throughout Africa. All of our brothers and sisters that are watching, you that are following the message and you that are not yet. God only have one church. I thank God for Brother Minister Abraham bringing the message to the Spanish-speaking brothers and sisters because we have a mass crowd of Spanish-speaking brothers and sisters all around the world. And I want them to get a chance. I want them to get a chance to hear this message in their language. And because we have so many brothers of the foreign country you're going to find many brothers up getting the chance to speak over the telecast before we speak to address those in their languages, whether it's in French, whether it's in Portuguese. It is very imperative that this message reach all nations, everybody, because it is God willing that no man perish, but that all come to repentance. All right, I want to go to work on the foundation, the basics. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Begin at verse 1. Acts chapter 2, we'll start at verse 1. Acts chapter 2 and at the very first verse. Listen. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Now, brothers and sisters, Pentecost did not originate in the New Testament. Pentecost was and is the celebration of the Jewish people. How God delivered them from the land of Egypt. And Pentecost is a great feast. Yeah. A large dinner. Big meal. I want to certify this as I go along in the book of Tibet. In the book of Tibet, chapter 1. I will start reading at verse 1. Come on, son. The book of the words of Tibet, son of Tobiah.
the son of Aniel, the son of Eduel. Yes. The son of Gabiel, of the seed of Asiel, of the tribe of Nethali. Uh -huh. Who in the time of Enesimer, king of the Syrians, was led captive out of Thesbe, which is at the right hand of that city. In the book of Tibet, chapter 1. Rather, in the book of Tibet, chapter 2. All right. And we'll start reading at verse 1. Move quick. Now, when I was come home again. When I came home again. And my wife Anna was restored unto me. Yes. With my son Tobias in the Feast of Pentecost. In the Feast of Pentecost. Which is the holy feast of the seven weeks. Which is the holy feast of the seven weeks. There was a good dinner there prepared. There was a good dinner prepared me prepared me in the which I sat down to eat so that's what Pentecost was it was a feast commemorating God goodness in behalf of Israel Pentecost was not the beginning of a Pentecostal church no get this get this I want to rub your nose in scripture Pentecost was not the beginning of a Pentecostal church. That's right. Pentecost have to do with eating. Which is the holy feast. Eating. That's right. Eating. That's right. A feast. Which is the holy feast of the seven weeks. Now on the day of Pentecost, meaning during the feast of the seven weeks, mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost fell in Jerusalem. That's right. Do you get what I'm telling you? That's right. During the time of Pentecost that was being held, the Holy Ghost fell in Jerusalem. And when the day of Pentecost... The second chapter of Acts was not where a Pentecostal church started. That's right. I, 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 I have to put the wood in order. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Or it take God in the days of Elijah when they offered up sacrifice. Elijah come along and put the wood in order. And I want to put everything back in order because historical literature yeah. have contaminated what is called church. That's right. And people are prone to believe historical literature That's right. more than biblical facts. That's right. Pentecost means eat, eat. food, mm. feast. feast. On the day of the feast. That's right. On the day of Pentecost. And when the day of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost. Was fully come. What do you mean fully come? That means the feast was in full bloom. That's right. There was already indulging in it. That's right. What happened? They were all with one accord in one place. Wait a minute. They wasn't in one accord <clears throat> on a spiritual perspective. There was a one accord eating. Right and commemorating what God done. That's right. It was God that chose to interrupt the feast. That's right. That's what we need. That's right. A interruption in our feast. Yeah. Viewers, this program is designed to interrupt your religion, interrupt your church, and more importantly, interrupt what you believe. That's right. We want to challenge what you believe by encouraging you to come on back to Bible. That's right. Come on back to Bible. That's right. Let us forget about how long we've been in any organization. Viewers, can I get you to do that? Yeah. Forget about the organization you were raised in. Lose sight on a position that you had. Right. Forget about who ordained you. Forget about what you were ordained. That's right. Never mind that your mama go there. Who cares that your daddy go there? Amen. Let's come back to the Bible that was here before your mama and before your daddy. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. 
All religions that profess the name Jesus, Jesus, Isa, or Yahashua Hamashiach, whatever language you want to say it in, yeah. let's come back to Bible and see is our belief system is according to the Bible That's right. and is our preaching is in keeping with the Bible That's right. and do all of our faith come from the Bible. Amen. I believe that's a good setup. Amen. What did the Holy Ghost say? Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. What is it? And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, let us remember, it was Jews gathering there from every nation. That's right. What happened? They were all with one accord in one place. They was all with one accord in one place. And suddenly. Suddenly. There was no announcement. Suddenly. There was no warning. No. They was enjoying their Pentecostal gathering. That's right. Commemorating what Jehovah done for them. That's right. Suddenly. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Suddenly. Suddenly. Glory to God. Amen. Before then, there was all in the upper room continuing in prayer. With supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus. These all continued. And with the brethren. That's right. But then, suddenly. 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 A Suddenly, sound from heaven come from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. The Bible didn't say it was wind. As of a rushing mighty wind. The Bible compared the sound to the sound of a rushing mighty wind. Mighty wind. The reason why I want to explain this because preachers are telling the people if you don't hear a wind before you speak in tongue, Lord. you don't have the Holy Ghost. You don't have to hear a wind. No. no. You don't have to hear no wind. And suddenly, suddenly, there came a sound from heaven. There came a sound. Mm -hmm. Sound. And the writer, by God's permission, is comparing the sound to wind. That's right. There came a sound from heaven as. As of a rushing mighty wind. As. A as. comparison. Mm -hmm. As a rushing mighty wind and. And it filled all the house where Hold they were it. sitting. Let's go back to the wind. Back to the wind. Which shows you the move of the Holy Ghost. That's right. There came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. Mighty wind. Rushing and mighty lets you know the impact of that was not soft. That's right. That means the Holy Ghost came with a force. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. If naturally you are on the receiving end of winds of a cyclone. The cyclone don't look at what you're wearing. No. Or how you feel at that time. That's right. Or how cute or handsome you think you are. That's right. But what the wind does is rearrange your appearance when you are in the wind and it takes you out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Glory to God. If you're in the wind of a cyclone or a hurricane, the force is so strong, you got to hold on to something so the wind don't take you over. That's right. I'm saying that to say this. There was a sound from heaven, from heaven. as a rushing, rushing. mighty wind. Yeah. So therefore, the noise that was made by the Holy Ghost was strong and loud, and it was heard and felt. That's right. So this cute, sheep, Holy Ghost. Go ahead. That many folks have. Go ahead. Is 
is not the sound of God. That's right. Because the Holy Ghost takes you out of your comfort zone. That's right. It changed your look. It changed your appearance. It might mess up what you wear. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why you viewers call the Holy Ghost a phenomenon. Yeah. As they say, God don't act like that. Yeah. You forgot it is written in the book of Isaiah that the ways of the Lord, of the Lord strange. is strange. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, you that says the Holy Ghost don't exist or speaking in tongues don't exist. And many of you write me and ask the question, do all speak in tongues? Let's read that. Yes. And then we'll go back to the book of Acts. In the Everybody book of 1 right? Corinthians. Listen. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're at verse 28. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're starting at verse 28. Begin at verse 28. And God has set some in the church, first apostles. God has set some in the church, first apostles. Secondarily prophets. Prophets. Thirdly teachers. Yes. After that, miracles, then gifts of healing. Yes. Helps governments, diversities of tongues. Mm -hmm. Are all apostles? No. An Are, apostle is God called, God sent, God anointed, God instructed, God made. That's right. Somebody wrote me and said, well, what is the need for apostles today? Mm -hmm. And what is the need for prophets today? Prophets Hold today. that. Give me figures 411 so I can answer that real quick. Benefit. And then let's shift gears and go back to the book of Corinthians. I want to show you what is the need for the apostles today and what is the need for the prophets today. In Ephesians chapter 4 and at verse 11. Says what? And he gave some apostles. He gave some apostles. And some prophets. Some prophets. And some evangelists. Some evangelists. And some pastors. Some pastors. And teachers. And teachers. For. What is the need? For the perfecting of the saints. Listen, there's not a child of God that can be perfected or be complete without these officers. That's right. For the perfecting of the saints means for the completion of the church. For the work. For the work. Of the ministry. Of the ministry. For the edifying. For the edifying. Of the body of Christ. And if it took all those positions to edify the church in the past, and there's only one church, and we're in that same church, same church. it takes the same thing now. That's right. So if you say there are no apostles and no prophets, then you might as well kick evangelists out. That's right. You might as well kick pastors out. That's right. You might as well kick elders out, and you might as well throw away the whole church. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Amen. Go back to the book of Corinthians, son. Back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 29. All right. Are all apostles? No. Are all prophets? All are not apostles. Apostles. All are not prophets. Are all teachers? Are all teachers? No. Are all workers of miracles? Are all workers of miracles? No. That's another thing mm. I want to elaborate on. Yeah. Somebody told me, well, if you're an apostle, all of them work miracles. That's a lie. That's a lie. There's only three apostles in the Bible that work miracles. You didn't know that? That's right. Here, 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 here the old man. Yeah. I said there's only three apostles in the Bible that you read work miracles. That's right. First one, Jesus. Jesus. Next one, Peter. Peter. Next one, Paul. Oh. You don't read where none of the others worked one miracle, yet they had the power to do it, but you don't see where God used them to get it done. That's right. You didn't see that, did you? Amen. The Bible acts. Are all workers of miracles. You don't read where Barnabas did one. You don't read where Matthias did one. You don't read where none of them did one other than Paul, when Doc, when uh, Eutasha fell asleep yeah. while Paul was preaching, Paul was preaching, he came on out and embraced him. That's right. And he came on back to life. That's right. When Dorcas died and the apostle prayed, she come on back. You never saw where all of them work miracles. That's why this is written. Are all workers of miracles? Are all workers of miracles? Of miracles. Yet they have the power and the authority, but you don't read but only three. Peter and John. Jesus, Peter, and John. Paul. Are you listening? That's right. Listen. Have all the gifts of healing. 
Have all the gifts of healing. No. Amen. All don't have the gift of healing. Amen. You can't heal nobody. In fact, nobody is a healer but God. But God. I can pray for you, but it takes God to heal you. That's right. I'm praying, asking God to do it. That's right. I can't make God do it. Yeah. The reason why I say that, because many of you preachers have said you can harry God. And the scripture you quote to justify your madness is when the prophet said, make haste, haste. O Lord. Oh Lord. He asked God to hurry up, That's right. but he did not hurry God up. That's right. Ain't nobody can hurry God up. No. You have to ask him. That's right. Put the word in order. That's right. Come on. Have all the gifts of healing. Have all the gifts of healing. Do all speak with tongue? No. Amen. Read that again. Do all speak with tongue? No. Amen. Read that again. Do all speak with tongues? No. Let me show you who's speaking in tongue for. Now. 16th chapter the book of Mark. Now in the book of St. Mark chapter 16, we're at verse 17. Says what? And these signs. These signs. Shall follow them that shall believe. Shall follow them. That believe. That believe. In my name. In my name. Shall they cast out devils. Shall they cast out devils. They shall speak. They shall speak what? With new tongues. Wait a minute. Who's speaking in tongues before? The, these signs shall follow them that believe. Who's speaking in tongue before? These signs shall follow them that believe. That's why I said no, because if you're not a believer, you're not going to speak. That's right. That's right. Eh? You're not a believer, you're not going to speak. That's right. Only a believer get on their knees and tarry for it. That's right. So when That's the right. Bible says, do all speak in tongues? Speak no, tongues. only believers pursue it. That's right. So you that say, I don't do it, okay, I'm fine with that. Fine with if that. you don't believe in it, you're not going to seek it. That's no right. one seek for something they don't believe in. Right. Amen. Glory to God, but everywhere the apostles went, Amen. the Holy Ghost fell. That's right. Why? They preached among believers. believers. While Peter yet spake the word, the Holy Ghost fell. The Holy Ghost fell That's right. Upon all of them that heard the, the word. word. Even them that came with Peter, those that believed were astonished mm -hmm. that came with Peter because on the Gentiles was pulled out the gift of the Holy Ghost. How did they know it? Because they heard they them speak, speak with in tongues. tongues and magnified God. That's right. Now, speaking in tongues. You better go back to Acts and read that, then I shift gears yes. to the book of Corinthians. Yes. And let's atomize tongues. Back in Acts chapter 2, we're starting in verse 1. Listen. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. At they, the time of the feast, when it came into fullness, there was a one accord in one place, and suddenly. There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. I let you know God is a very strong force. That's right. As a rushing mighty wind, and it. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. If you truly have the Holy Ghost, it fills all of self. All the house. The reason why all of self need the Holy Ghost, yeah. because all of self is wicked. That's right. And it need the Holy Ghost to discipline, tame, govern, set in place the whole self, yeah. even down to your fingers. That's right. Because the Holy Ghost says, touch not. Touch not. That's right. You need the Holy Ghost to govern your feet because a good man's steps is ordered by the Lord. That's right. If not, your feet will be quick to run into mischief. Amen. Amen. It takes the Holy Ghost to govern your eyes in order for you to have a single eye. That's right. Holy Ghost got to govern your thoughts. And to the said, let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus. So all the elements of self must be filled with the Holy Ghost. And then once the Holy Ghost come in you, you must strive to submit to him yeah. that is in you. That's right. Listen. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And what happened? And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. Hold it. What kind of tongue? Cloven tongues. Let's define cloven. Cloven. Yes. cloven. Sometime a child is born 
with a cloven foot. Yes. One foot is straight mm -hmm. and the other foot is somewhat bent, yeah. like a cloven foot. So what the doctors may do is put a brace. Yeah. It, it's a foot that's not yet straight. straight. That's right. And when the foot is not straight, it affects the momentum of the body. That's right. So sometimes it may hobble. Yeah, that's right. It ain't straight. Yeah. So in some cases, surgery can correct the cloven foot. So the cloven foot is as straight as the other foot. That's right. Many of us don't have the Holy Ghost yet. Yeah. We have got as far as the cloven tongue. Cloven tongues. The cloven tongue is equal to a stammering lip. For with stammering lips. With stammering lips and other tongues shall I speak to unto people. my people. So a stammering lip and the cloven tongue is the tongue that has not yet uttered another tongue. That's right. Tongues. Other tongues. Other tongues. New tongue. Yeah. Unknown tongue. Unknown tongue. Same thing. Mm -hmm. But there's a reason why they have different titles. That's right. New tongue. When you receive the Holy Ghost, that tongue will be new to you because you never spoke it before. Yeah. Other tongue. That tongue will be in another language that you never spoke before. That's right. Unknown tongue. You won't know what language you're speaking unless God give you or someone else the ability to interpret. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. I want to rid us of the myth of these speaking in tongue teaching where preachers teach, you start it off. You speak it first. Yeah. Then the Lord come in and pick it up and carry the rest. That's right. From start to finish, it's supposed to be Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 2. And at verse 4. Says what? And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And what? And began to speak with other tongues. How? As the Spirit. How? As the Spirit. Who made them do it? As the Spirit. Who's responsible? The Spirit. No, when they saw Bishop coming. The Spirit. When Bishop came in the church. The Spirit. When the choir got started. The Spirit. Amen. As the Spirit. As the Spirit give what? Gave them utterance. So, as who do it? As the Spirit. Who do it? Spirit. John 4, 24, I want to establish who the Spirit is. God is a Spirit. The Bible said in John 4, 24, God is, is a, a spirit. spirit. So it says, as the Spirit give utterance mean as God speaketh. That's right. Now, for years, churches have taught that speaking in tongue is the language of heaven. Yeah. For years, churches have taught when you speak in tongue, you speak in the language of angels. That's right. That's and right. when you speak in tongue, you're speaking God's language. God's language. As if God is confined to one language. That's right. That's right. Let us define this speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. The works of it, the function of it, the mystery of it, the wonderfulness of it comes from heaven. That's right. But the language is the language that exists on earth. Acts chapter 2, we start at verse 5. Let me say it again. Mm -hmm. Glory to God, glory to God. You thought that you spoke in a language that angels speak? Yeah. The Bible never said that angels have the Holy Ghost. No. The Holy Ghost speaking in tongue in tongues. is a language that already exists on the earth. That's right. Someone said if it's already on earth, then that means I'm born with the Holy Ghost. No, it don't. No. Let me itemize this in such detail so the logical thinker can stop thinking. 
Acts chapter 2, we'll start at verse 5. There's a scripture in the book of Acts that folks overlook, and that was the full story of when the Holy full. Ghost fell. That's right. The That's full right. story. That's right. Listen! Acts chapter 2, we'll start at verse 5. What is it? And they were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews. First of all, look who's there. Jews. Jews. Devout men. Devout men. Out of every nation under heaven. Out of every heaven. nation under heaven. Now when this was noise abroad. When this was noise, meaning when it was heard. The multitude. When, 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 the, when, when, when they heard all this noise, noise. of tongues mm -hmm. being spoken. Yeah. Uh -huh. The multitude came together. The people came together. And were confounded. They were confounded. Because that every man. Every man. Heard them speak. Them that received the Holy Ghost. Them that was looking on. That's right. Heard them speak how? In his own language. How did that language come? In his own language. What? And they were all amazed and marveled. Amen. They heard him speak how? In his own language. That means this. That's something, brother. It is something. It's something. If God fill one with the Holy Ghost, you will speak in a language yeah. that God created. Yes. But he created that language that somewhere is an everyday language. That's right. The mystery is you don't know the language. That's right. That's why it's unknown to you. Unknown, that's right. The mystery is, you don't know what you're saying. That's right. That's why it's new to you. That's the right. The mystery is, you speak in English, and God got you speaking a language somewhere else. That's right. You don't even know what country it resides. Go ahead. All you know, God got you doing it. That's right. The Bible never taught that it is the language of God no. or the language of angels. Because that every man heard them speak. Most churches did not read no more than the four verses, four verses. of the second chapter of Acts. That's it. When they spoke in tongues. That's right. But we're going to keep reading. That's right. Listen. Now when this was noised abroad, the Blessed multitude came be together. be the name of God. Amen. When this was noise abroad, the multitude came together. The multitude came together. And were confounded. And they were confounded. Because that every man heard them speak in his own language. In his own language. And they were all amazed they all and was marveled, amazed and were surprised. Saying one to another. All right, listen that. Give chapter and verse. Acts chapter 2, now we're at verse 7. Give chapter and verse. Acts chapter 2, we're at the seventh verse. Give chapter and verse. Acts chapter 2, and we're at verse 7. Now the public is looking at these folks speaking in tongue. That's right. And the public was all amazed. And marveled. And they were surprised. Saying one to what, another. What did they say to each other, Williams? Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? All these that speak are Galileans? And how hear we every man? How do we hear every man? These are the looker ones commenting. That's right. How? Now the looker ones did not have the Holy Ghost. That's right. That's why they was amazed. Amazed. Because these people was that was there, they wasn't of their ethnic group. No. They didn't even speak their language. Yeah. So all that was there looking on were amazed. And marveled. I'm, I'm shocked. Saying one to another. They saying one to another. Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? They Galileans. And how hear we every man? How do how do we hear these people, every man that's speaking now? In our own tongue, wherein we were born. Wait a minute. Amen. They spoke how? How hear we every man in our own tongue? And where was the origin of the tongues of the looker on? Wherein we were born. We were born. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. Listen. And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? What else? Parthians. 
Parthians, and Medes, Medes and Edomites, Edomites, and the dwellers, the dwellers of Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and, in Judea, and Cappadocia, Cappadocia, in Pontus, Pontus and Asia, Asia for, for Gria, for Gria, and Pamphylia, and what? In Egypt, and Egypt, and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene. This where all these people came from. And strangers of Rome. And there were strangers of Rome. Jews. Mean there were strange Italians there. That's right. Jews. And proselytes. Proselytes. Cretes. Cretes. And Arabians. Greeks, they came from Greece. That's right. Arabians, they was from Arabs. We do hear them speak. Wait a minute. Amen. Amen. We do hear them speak. In our tongue. And what? In our tongue. And what? In our tongue. And what? In our tongue. In our tongue. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 In our tongues. Our tongue. Our tongues. And because we know Hallelujah. they don't know our language, what do we call it? This, the, this, this is, is the, the wonderful, wonderful works of God. Works of of God. God. Amen. <laughs> wonderful works. Yeah. They're not from our location. That's right. What do you mean? That's right. God can make a minister Preach in English. That's right. And take the ear of a foreigner who speaks no English. That's right. And the foreigner can hear the whole message. That's right. In his language. His language. Amen. When you speak another tongue, it's another tongue. That's why it's the wonderful work of wonderful God. Works of God. Because you're not from that nation. You never learned it. That's why you need a divine interpreter That's right. to bring the mystery right. of the other tongue. That's right. The Bible ain't never said Amen. it's the language of the angels. No. Or it's the language of God. We do hear them speak in our tongues. Our tongues. Where? The, in our tongues. Where? In our tongues. What else? The wonderful works of God. Wonderful works. So God can fill you with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden, you speak in Arabic. That's right. Fill you with the Holy Ghost, and all of a sudden, you speak in Portuguese. Portuguese. See, that's the act of heaven. That's right. And that's where it makes it wonderful. W wonderful. Why? I'm not an Arab. That's right. I'm not Portuguese. That's right. And yet God got me talking in a language That's where right. I'm not from. Amen. What am I saying? What am I saying? It's unknown to me. That's right. So therefore, if it's unknown, God edify me. That's right. But if God want everybody to know it, then God will make me or someone else to interpret so the church can get the message. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. Uh, I, I want you to get this knowledge. Amen. This doesn't mean you born with the Holy Ghost. No. This doesn't mean because you're able to speak several languages that means you have the Holy Ghost. No. Why, Pastor Jennings? Because if you speak several different languages mm. on your own, then that's not the wonderful works of God. No. The wonderful works of God is when God can make you speak in a language and no one taught you. That's right. Someone said, well, why would you call it the Holy Ghost? Because God is making you speak in the language that he created. He created. There is no... Let, yeah, thank you, Jesus. Give me the book of Psalms. Let me back up what I just said. There is no speech. Yes. No language. No language. I want to give Bible for this. In the book of Hallelujah Psalms. Hallelujah. 19. God. Are you listening, church? Amen. Yeah. Psalms 19, we'll start at verse 1. Psalm 19. At verse, at verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God. The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament, firmament showeth his handiwork. Showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech. Day unto day uttereth speech. And night unto night showeth knowledge. There, Call chapter and verse now. Psalms 19, and we're at verse 3. David says what? There is no speech. 
There is no speech. No language. No language. Where their voice is where not their heard. Where their voice is not heard. When the apostles was here, there was no language barrier that they ran upon. That's right. That's right. That's right. No language barrier. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The wonderful works of God. God. That's right. Hallelujah. Our Arab man received the Holy Ghost. Amen. And speaking with a French tongue. Come on. <laughs> Amen. A mute person who can't speak no language. No language. And his mouth come open speaking Korean. That's right. And yet he don't have a tongue to place English. That's right. It's the wonderful, wonderful works, works of, God. of God. Which mean your speaking this by God's permission. That's why it says, as the Spirit give utterance. utterance. Which means you're not speaking this on your own. That's right. As the Spirit give utterance. gives utterance. utterance. Now, there's a word that's attached to tongues called diverse. Glory to God. The Bible talk about diverse. Tongues. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and first, at verse 10. 1 Corinthians 12 and at verse 10. And 10. To another the working of miracles. To the another a working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another prophecy. To another discerning of spirits. To another discerning of spirits. To another diverse kinds of tongues. That means God can fill someone with the Holy Ghost and yet they don't speak in one language. That's right. They speak Dimes. in different languages. That's right. By the Spirit. That's right. He can start speaking Arabic by the Spirit. All of a sudden, before you know it, he's speaking Korean by the Spirit. That's before right. you know it, he's speaking in the Philippine tongue by the Spirit. Dimes. And yet, he is of none of those nationalities. That's right. Dimes. What are you witnessing? The wonderful work God. of God. Wonderful. Blessed be. Hallelujah. Oh, this, this is so beautiful. Go and say God. Hallelujah. Ah, this is so beautiful. Amen. Hallelujah. What is it? We, back in first, uh, Acts chapter 2 and verse 11. Acts 2, 11. We do hear them speak in our tongues. We hear them speak in our tongues. The wonderful works of God. The wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed. They was all shocked. And were in doubt. They were in doubt. Saying one to another, what meaneth this? If those people speaking in tongue was of the nationalities that was watching, you ain't shocked when you talk English to somebody. No. No. If I speak English and Harrison speak English, we ain't shocked. No. But my, if, if, if Minister Her, who's Mongolian, I don't know nothing about the Mongolian language. But if the Holy Ghost come on me and may have a prophecy for me to give him, yeah. if he speaks no English yeah. and just his native tongue in Mongolian, then the prophecy that God give me for him, he's going to give me the tongue right. to relate the message to him. That's right. That he may be edified. That's right. Let me give you an example of the wonderful works of God. Works of God. Give me the book of Daniel. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Give me the book of Daniel. Amen. In the days of King, I believe, Nebuchadnezzar, writing came on the wall. Nebuchadnezzar had a son named Belshazzar. Yes. And then Daniel was called Belteshazzar. Belteshazzar. Follow me, church. In the book of Daniel, chapter 5, we'll start at verse 1. Yes. Belshazzar, the king, made a feast, made a great feast to a thousand of his lords. All right. These was during the days of the son of Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar. Belshazzar. All right. Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords. Yes. And drank wine before the thousand. 
Yes. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels, uh -huh. which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, uh -huh. that the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines might drink therein. Yes. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines drank in them. Mm -hmm. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and Come of on, stones. Son. Now at verse 5, in the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand. In the same hour Amen. came forth fingers of a man's hand. And, God mm -hmm. let his power be seen as a man's hand. That's right. Why as a man's hand? So the public can identify with it. That's they can right. identify with the hand of a man. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick yes. upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Yes. Then the king's countenance was changed. Oh, the king saw a part of the hand, but he ain't seen no body attached. That's right. If you saw a hand writing, your countenance will change too. Amen. Oh, yeah, you see a hand start writing somewhere, and you don't see nobody attached to it but a hand. Uh, in fact, you may not even stay around to see what's written. That's right. Listen. Then the king's countenance was changed. Then what? And his thoughts troubled him. What else? So that the joints of his loins were loose. Yeah, the joints of his loins loose me. he's shaking. Shaking. Uh -huh. And his knees smote his one knees against smote another. smote one against the other. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers. He looked at him crying out. Bring the astrologers. The Chaldeans. Get me the Chaldeans. And the soothsayers. And the, and the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof, yes. shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Listen. Then came in all the king's wise men. Then all the king's wise men. But they could not read the writing. Amen. Nobody can interpret another tongue mm -hmm. on their own. That's right. But uh, we'll get a chance to read that even the interpretation come right. by the Spirit. That's right. We, we, we'll show you that also. That's right. You got to speak in another tongue by the Spirit, and then you got to interpret by the Spirit. That's right. Both got to be done by the self-same Spirit. Self -same spirit. We, we, we're going to read that also. Mm -hmm. All right. Then came in all the king's wise men. Yes. But they could not read the writing nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. Uh -huh. Then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in a minute. And his lords were astonished. Now the queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, yes. came into the banquet house, and the, king, and the queen spake uh -huh. and said, O king, live forever. O oh, king, let me encourage you. How about, thoughts how about thee? just living forever? That's right. Don't let your thoughts trouble you. Nope. I know you see some writing, and you see a hand, and you over here shaking. Let me encourage you now. Don't, don't worry. I, 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 I know somebody that can help you out. Nor, uh -huh. let, nor let thy countenance be changed. What is it? There is a man in thy kingdom. Hallelujah. There is a man in thy kingdom. In thy kingdom. In whom is the spirit. Wait a minute. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The same one that wrote it yeah. has to be in the one to interpret. That's right. Spirit wrote it. That's right. And you need someone with the spirit to interpret. That's right. The reason why all the others could not interpret, because the one that wrote it wasn't in them. That's right. Listen. There is a man in thy There's kingdom. A man in the kingdom. In whom is the spirit of the holy God. Spirit of the holy God. And in the days of in thy the father. In the days of thine father. Light. I said, what's in him? Light. That means he can see and understanding and understanding and wisdom wisdom like the wisdom of the gods was found in him and what whom the king Nebuchadnezzar thy father the king I say thy father made master of the magicians astrologers Chaldeans and suits all right let's get to when Daniel was reading the writing now in that Daniel chapter 5 we're down at verse 24 listen then was the part of the hand here was the part of the hand sent from him uh -huh. and this writing was written and this is the writing that was written Many, many to kill you for a sin. Hold it. Remember, wise men, Chaldeans, soothsayers, soothsayers, astrologers. And these fellows was educated. That's right. But there was a language up there. They ain't had no knowledge of. That's right. Absolutely none. None. Someone speaking in tongue by the Spirit, 
If God didn't give you the ability to interpret, hold your peace. That's right. That's right. Shut your mouth. Amen. Because when one speaks in another tongue by the Spirit, it flows. Yeah. When one interprets that tongue by the Spirit, it flows. That's right. There is no complication on either part because it's all done by the self-same Spirit. Amen. Listen. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written. And this is the writing that was written many, 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 to, many to kill your fasting. This is the interpretation of the thing. This is what it means. Many, many. God hath numbered thy kingdom. God hath numbered your kingdom. This, and, is the, this is what it means. Mm -hmm. and, uh -huh. and finished it. And finished to it. Kill. To kill. Thou art weighed, You're weighed in, the in the balance. And art found and you're wanting. Found wanting. Perez. Perez. Thy kingdom is thy divided. Thy kingdom is divided. And given to the Medes and, and given Parsons. to the Medes and Persians. And Persians. Uh -huh. Then commanded Belshazzar. And they clothed Daniel with scarlet. Spirit was in Daniel. Spirit, that's right. It wasn't in the others. No. All right, now let's get the interpretation of the tongue and how all of this is done by the self-same spirit. Now in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, we're starting at verse 1. Yes. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. Yes. But rather that ye may prophesy. Now, why did the Bible say rather that ye prophesy? Mm -hmm. Because prophesying come in every body language where they can comprehend. That's right. Prophecy never come in a language to a people that they don't speak. That's right. Because that would make the prophecy in vain. Mm -hmm. All right. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God. Hold it. Mm. Amen. <laughs> now. Amen. If Bishop Ferguson was French, yes, and I'm French, mm -hmm. we can converse with each other. That's right. But if the Holy Ghost come on upon me, yeah. they see if we converse with each other in our natural language, we are speaking unto men. That's right. But the moment the Holy Ghost come upon me, that's right, and make me speak a language that I know not and never spoke before, yeah. Right then, I'm not speaking unto, unto men, men, I'm speaking unto God. That's right. Because it is the Holy Ghost that's controlling my tongue. Mm -hmm. And how be in the spirit, I speak a mystery, and it's a mystery to me, and it's a mystery to him. That's right. Listen. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Hold it. So you that say you got the Holy Ghost, why is it that many of you viewers can't feel it? Until your bishop comes to church. That's right. I tell, look, I tell everybody, if you can't feel the presence of God until you see Pastor Jennings, you don't have no more Holy Ghost, then you can jump double dutch with an elephant's trunk. Amen. It's the Holy Ghost, Holy not Ghost. the Jennings Ghost. That's right. That's right. That's right. It's the Holy Ghost, not the minister's ghost. Amen. Holy Ghost Holy means Ghost. the function of God in men and in women. That's right. Listen. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue. What? Speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Why? For no man understandeth him. No man understanding. And what's the reason, William? How, how be it in the spirit. How? In the spirit. You see how the book keep pointing to the spirit? The spirit. All this must be done by the Spirit That's and right. not on your own. That's right. How be it? How be it in the Spirit? What is he doing? He speaketh mysteries. A mystery is something you don't know. That's right. And the only way the mystery can be cleared up, somebody got to be able to interpret that unknown That's tongue. That's and right. And just like in the Spirit, he speaks that unknown tongue. In the Spirit, someone got to have the interpretation of that tongue. That's right. Uh -huh. But he that prophesies, he that prophesies, speaketh unto men. He what? Speaketh unto men. Hold it. When the Bible says he that prophesies, prophesy unto men, because he gonna come direct in your language. And the reason why the prophecy is for men is for men to get right, to be warned, to make modifications, right. to make a change. Mm -hmm. 
Prophecy is for people. But he that prophesies, he that prophesies, speaketh unto men, speaketh unto men, to edification, to edification, and exhortation, and exhortation, and comfort, and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, what edifieth himself. See, when you're speaking in tongue and there's no interpreter, who's getting edified? He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. But remember, it's done by the Spirit. By the Spirit. You that got this tongue, you speak when you get ready. You wake up. Amen. Amen. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. Do you hear the Bible talking? For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue. You that are watching. If you ever go to any so-called revival, or if you're a member of a church, Amen. and your pastor, your bishop, your Jerry Curl head reverend, your apostle, your prophet, yeah. your jack leg evangelist, and your low life bishop, and your good for nothing elder. Amen. Any preacher. Any preacher. Get up at any time and say, when I count to three. Yeah. You're going to speak in tongue? Yeah. And you find the people doing it? Mm -hmm. It's not the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost. It's the moving of the spirit of Satan. That's right. Who can count down right. and make God blast off? That's right. The Holy Ghost isn't something you turn on and turn off. No. The Bible speaks plain. It's the wonderful work of God. of God. Wonderful works. So if it's the wonderful work of God, why do your bishop have control over your spirit? That's right. That's right. Your bishop have no business to have control over your spirit. No, no. You don't move because bishop move. That's right. Bishop shake, hey, he go that way, you go that way. He ha, you ha. Hey, ha. That's right. That's right. I want you apostolic and Pentecostal things to get this. Yeah. You revival lovers. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Where rodents come in your church, yeah. posing as preachers. Yeah. Pulpit possums. Amen. Am I right? Amen. And count to three. Count to three. And everybody jump up. That's right. That's right. And then the bishop, you think this is, he got great power. Then all he said, then he said, when I count to three, all of you stop. Yeah. One, two, three. That's right. That's right. How is it you infidels? Amen. Think the Holy Ghost is controlled That's by right. a man. That's right. The Holy Ghost is God. Amen. Amen. Am I right, church? That's right. That's right. When the apostles laid hands on folk mm -hmm. and they received the Holy Ghost, the apostles didn't give them the Holy Ghost. No. The apostles were simply used as a channel for the Holy Ghost to work through. That's right. But the Holy Ghost is not man's to give. No. Holy Ghost is a gift. It's a gift. The Bible says every good gift, every perfect gift comes from above. That's right. And it comes down from the Father of lights of whom there is no variables, no shadow of turning. Read quick, son, because my time is getting away. Everybody all right? Amen. Come on, Williams. 1 Corinthians 14 at verse 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God. But no man understandeth him. 
How be it in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. Tongues. 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 Speaking an unknown tongue. 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 Another tongue mean another language. That's right. That's right. And it's as the spirit give utterance. Give utterance. And if the spirit utter it, the spirit don't need no boost from you. No. He doesn't need any help from you. No. Real quick. But he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification. Yes. And exhortation. And exhortation and, and comfort. comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. Yes. But he that prophesieth edifieth the church. Uh -huh. I would that ye all spake with tongues. But what? But rather that ye prophesy. All right. This is the scriptures that tongue fighters use. Yeah. And they say, you see that? Paul said tongue wasn't necessary. Paul ain't never said no such thing, liar. No. I would that ye all spake with tongues. He said he preferred you all did it. But rather that ye prophesied. Hold it. Why? Because For speaking in tongue is a message. Yeah. And prophesying is a message. Right. The yeah. difference is the understanding of the message is clearer in prophecy versus speaking in tongue. Right. The message in speaking in tongue is not clear unless there's an interpreter. That's right. Without an interpreter, the message of speaking in tongue remains a mystery. A mystery. Now do you get it? Amen. Listen. I would that ye all spake with tongues. I would that ye all spake in tongues. But rather that ye prophesy. Rather that ye prophesy. For greater is he that prophesies. Than what? Than he that speaketh with tongues. All right, let me explain that. Explain that. Let me explain that. That's right. Let me explain that. Greater is he that prophesied. Because there are folks that say, well, I don't speak in tongues, so all I got to do is prophesy. I, I'm better. No, they don't mean that. No. It goes back to what I said earlier. When one speak in tongue of the Spirit give utterance, it's a message. That's right. Without an interpreter, it remains a mystery. That's right. So the one that prophesied, that message is greater, greater. in understanding than the one that's speaking in tongue. That's right. Because prophecy always, always, yes. if it's God will, will come yeah. in your language. That's right. Wherein speaking in tongue can come in many languages. Yeah. That's why it's the wonderful work of God and it's also a mystery. Without an interpreter, that's right. no one, no one can comprehend the message. That's right. Be quick. I would that ye all speak with tongues, but rather that ye prophesy. For greater is he that prophesied than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret. Except he does what? Except he interpret. If there's an interpreter, prophecy ceases to be greater. That's right. Now the prophecy becomes equal. What do you mean? In meaning, in meaning. and in understanding. That's right. Because the message that derived from speaking in tongue when there's an interpreter, I can understand that message as the same way I can understand the message when someone prophesied because it's going to come in my language. That's right. Read quick. For greater is he that prophesies than he that speaketh with tongues. Yes. Except he interpret, uh -huh. that the church may receive edify. Wait a minute. If there's an interpreter, what is the reason? That the church may receive edify. You that speak in tongue on your own. Amen. And it ain't from God. From God. You don't have the Holy Ghost. No. Did you hear? That's right. Just, just, just look at many of the preachers in the pulpit. When they lose their pages to their text, to go off in the tongue. Yeah. Uh, and God said, how about Shatta? I got to get a Honda. I done heard all type of tongues. I remember when I was a kid at a church, a man went in a tongue of a nursery rhyme. Peter Piper, pick a pecker. Peter Piper, pick a peppers. My Lord. My Lord help him. People are forgetting what the Bible said. It's a it's language. language. Other tongue. Other tongue. Language. That's right. Other tongues. The Holy Ghost put you in the church. That's right. By Bible one spirit. Yeah. First Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 13. For by one spirit. By I, one Holy Ghost. One spirit. You are baptized. Are we all baptized into one body? Into one body. 
Whether we be Jews, they don't care what nationality you are, or Gentiles, or Gentiles. Whether we be bond, whether you're bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. Wait a minute, you got wait. God really want this in you. He say you got to drink, drink, drink into one Spirit. Drink it. No one say, well, you mean to tell me how? What do water and Spirit got in common? The Bible called it living water. Living water. Didn't it say so? That's right. First, uh, St. John chapter 4. Read quick, son. And at verse 14. John 4, 14. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him. Whosoever drinketh of the water that I give you. Shall never thirst. You won't get thirsty. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him. Shall be where? In him. It shall be where? In him. And when it's in you, how it going to act? A well of water. Of what? A well of water. A what? A well of water. And how it going to act? Springing up. Spread. Springing up. What? Springing up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear us. Hallelujah. When a person have the Holy Ghost, Hallelujah. they have to move. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Must move. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But the water that I shall give him. So Jesus, there. Hallelujah. The water God said that I give. Shall be in him. It's going to be in you. A well of water. It's going to be very deep. Well of water springing up, springing up into everlasting life. Spring up. Amen. Let me give you a better understanding. He that believeth on me. Yeah. Let me give you a better understanding. Amen. Put water in a pot and put it on the stove. The water is still. That's right. That's right. Huh? That's right. But the moment I turn the flame on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Hallelujah. I turn the flame on, the water belts around. That's right. Spring it up. That's the way the Holy Ghost is. Spring it up. Amen. It's like fire. Fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The prophet said it's like fire. Oh, shut up. He said it shut up. Shut up in my oh, bones. Yeah. Hallelujah. He said it shut up. Fire. Hallelujah. The Hallelujah. Holy Ghost is fire. It's fire. Hallelujah. John said, one come after, after me. me. Mightier than I, we shall baptize. We're gonna baptize you with the Holy Ghost. With the Holy Ghost and with fire. And that with, with fire. 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 Hallelujah. 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 You have to move. Hallelujah. 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 There is Hallelujah. no still Holy Ghost. That's right. There That's right. is no Holy Ghost. Without movement. That's right. Hallelujah. Eh? None. Hallelujah. 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 None. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may not move as much as someone else. Hallelujah. That don't matter. Hallelujah. But you're going to move yeah. sometime. That's right. That's right. The Holy Ghost is fire. Fire. That's right. It makes God. Move in you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory. Go ahead. Glory to God. Go ahead. That's what the Holy Ghost is. Hallelujah. That's why the pulpits Go ahead. are dead. Yes. No Holy Ghost. No Holy Ghost. No fire. That's right. No God. No God. No anointing. Hallelujah. Holy Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. 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 Go ahead. Glory to God. Go ahead. No anointing. Go ahead. Glory. Go ahead. When you have the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That spirit. Hallelujah. It moves in you. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He shall Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. He shall baptize you. It moves in you. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Bless the name of God. Go ahead, man. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost. Go ahead. It's called a rushing mighty wind. Rushing mighty wind. Living water. 
That's right. And it's called fire. Fire. All three things move. That's right. Wind moves. Move. Wind will push it. That's right. When wind's strong enough, you can't walk in it. That's right. It pushes you. Pushes you. Amen. Yeah. Go ahead. You understand? Go ahead. Jeremiah compared the Holy Ghost to new wine. New wine. He said, I'm like a man that wine has overcome. overcome. And when a man is overtaken in wine, That's right. he's drunk. That's right. He lose all control of self. That's right. That's the way the Holy Ghost is. Amen. You lose control of self. That's right. You're not proper. Amen. You're not cute. Go ahead. You're not handsome. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hallelujah. 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 Go ahead. Glory to God. Go ahead. Go ahead. You understand? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not proper in the eyes of people. Hallelujah. On the day of Pentecost. Go ahead. When they received the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. Oh. Those that was watching. That's right. It is written. They were amazed. They were amazed and marveled. That's the way God does. That's right. Here you have a gang banger, cussing, shooting, yeah. serve time for murder, yeah. hardcore, yeah. tough. Yes. All of a sudden, he's in church, tattoos everywhere. Yeah. Something hit him. Masculinity. Go ahead. Hallelujah. You are under the control. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Of the Holy Ghost. They were all filled. They was what? They were all filled with the Everybody Holy Ghost. Everybody all right? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 That's the name of God. Are you listening? When I say it takes away your masculinity, mm. there ain't no tough Holy Ghost. That's right. Just the Holy Ghost. Mm. Acts 2.38. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's the name of God. Hallelujah. Then Peter said unto them, repent. The whole world Hallelujah. must repent. Must repent. Must repent. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Repent. That's it. The whole world Hallelujah. must repent. repent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Go ahead. Oh, I thank God the whole world. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Must repent. Repent. And be baptized. Every one of you. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be the name of God. Hallelujah. Be baptized. 
Every one of you. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins. For the remission. Hallelujah. Glory to God. For the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And you Ghost. shall receive. Hallelujah. The gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you. Anybody? Hallelujah. Want to obey the word of God and be baptized Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet if you want it. Stand on your feet if you want it. Stand, hallelujah. Stand on your feet if you want it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All of you that are standing, all of you that are standing, you that are standing, go to the back. You that are standing, go right to the back. <laughs> That's in the name of God. He's a mighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. We serve a mighty God. Mighty God. We have the Holy Ghost today. Hallelujah. Because it was given from a mighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Yes, what a mighty God we serve. Yes, angels. Heaven and earth. What a mighty Yes, what a mighty Yes, what a mighty Yes, angels Heaven and earth Hallelujah Thank God What a mighty
God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for the preaching of the gospel. Yes, sir. Thank God for the masses of the saints assembling ourselves in this auditorium. What a mighty God we serve. We thank God for this holy convocation. We thank God for the moving of the Holy Ghost. Thank God for those who are going down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. If anyone else wants to be baptized, they're baptizing. They're preparing right now. If anybody else wants to be baptized upstairs or downstairs, you may go to the back. Amen. Refreshments will be served afterwards upstairs. We thank God. We've expended a lot of energy. God is wonderful, brothers and sisters. We serve a mighty God. It is God who has made us, not we ourselves. We thank God for our general overseer. We thank God for the apostle, for the man of God. We thank God for each and every one of you. Before we give the benediction, do we have any important announcements? Let us bow our heads in prayer. Lord God, we give thanks for this holy convocation, O God. My God, we thank you, O God, for the preaching of the gospel. We thank you, O God, for the souls of men and women, boys and girls, O God. My God, we thank you, O God, that our hearts have been pricked by the word of God. We thank you, O God, for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, O God. My God, we pray for the many who are yet waiting upon you for the gift of the Holy Ghost, O God. Lord God, bless our hearts and bless our minds, O oh God. My God, bless the different temples everywhere, O oh God, in America or throughout the world, Lord. My God, bless us, O oh God, that we would retain the word of God in our hearts, that we would be a changed people, O oh God, that we would be a holy people, O oh God, that we would be a sanctified people set apart for your using, O oh God. My God, we're praying, God, that the words of our mouth, the meditation of our heart would be accepted in your sight. This we pray, my God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Be back on time for this evening. What time is it? This evening. What time is service this evening? Six o'clock.